Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Shalama Lawson with your daily update. Coming up in today's program, tortoises are in danger of becoming extinct in Zimbabwe. A gifted painter is showing off his work in Africa Unity Square Park. And Liam will be chatting to Simba Nyananga, the founder of Zim Online Media, in today's Zim Talk. Tortoises may soon become extinct in Zimbabwe if nothing is done to curb poaching of these reptiles. ATV went to find out more. Poachers are threatening the survival of Zimbabwe's bell-hinged tortoise, which is now endangered across the country. The animal has disappeared from swaths of its habitat taken by poachers for consumption and the supply of illicit pet trade. Wild numbers of the tortoise have fallen drastically, putting them in the red category of threatened species. Yes, we are slowly running out of them and we believe we have to protect them. We have not applied this yet to CITES, but as far as Zimbabwe is concerned, we believe we have to include them in one of those species that are fast uh, depleting. Is this what happens is depends on individuals why they are doing that. Look at the crocodiles. At some point we are running short of crocodiles until we decided that if we do crocodile farming, we increase the species. And as we speak now, everywhere, north, east, west, we have crocodile farms. And it has helped us uh, bring back the numbers. And in actual uh, fact, in some areas we are overpopulated and they are becoming a problem to our livestock. So, yes, uh, we can always use that. Uh. Trade in the species is banned, but thousands of the animals are still being killed and smuggled out of the country illegally. Some local communities hunt tortoises for food, but the greatest threat comes from foreigners visiting the country who illegally export the tortoises. Animal experts say a tortoise can fetch $1,000 on the pet and exotic reptile market, a price that drives the unsustainable trade. A lot of animals have been killed this year and also that is also moving into our own country. Uh, it's very disturbing because if you look at um, our economy as a region as well, it's also based on ecotourism. We are privileged to have such species, you know, and I'm sure uh, it will be very important that the such species survive, uh, not only for ecotourism reasons, but also, you know, as biodiversity. Uh, so it's important, I think, that some measures are taken, especially against poachers. In February this year, four Chinese nationals were arrested on cruelty charges after they cut up and ate rare tortoises. Parks and wildlife investigators found 40 skeletons, 13 live tortoises and tortoise meat when they raided a house in southern Zimbabwe. The Bell's Hingeback is a tropical tortoise found in central and southern Africa. It is distinguished by its shell that can close over its back legs as protection when it feels danger. The remaining animals are in very isolated and fragmented populations in very low numbers and are unlikely to breed into bigger populations. If nothing is done soon to save the tortoise population, the trafficking of these rare and exotic creatures will continue unabated threatening Zimbabwe's biodiversity. Hezekiah Moyo, a gifted painter, is attracting the attention of people passing through the Africa Unity Square Park. We spoke to the artist in question. While many people use the Africa Unity Square Park in Harare as a place to relax, Hezekiah Moyo has turned it into a studio for his visual arts creations. On a daily basis, people walking through the park 
inevitably become his customers who pay to have their portraits painted. ATV recently paid the 23-year-old artist a visit in the park. Just the environment, just like everything, that is, that is for something to do with art has inspired me. Some of my, just some friends that I've just came across, then they've just inspired me. If I see something about art, it just inspires me. I don't have to, to, to start it. As long as I see it, I, I go home and then I start uh, doing that thing. And then I'll be perfecting myself that way. Hezekiah, who started drawing when he was eight, says he has never been to a school of art, yet he strokes the brush with the finesse of an accomplished painter. Due to financial constraints, Hezekiah has not been able to fulfill his dream of studying art. Yeah. script is going. Okay, I'll just say. I've gone there to, to get some advice there, but I never, I, I attempted to go, I wanted to go for, for, for a school of art, but I didn't have the, the resources, and I didn't have the money. I put it in the Here's a Kia, talked about the type of tools he uses when painting. Color, I use uh, oil syllables. These are pencil colors which are um, specially designed for art. That's what I use. Black and white, I use B pencils and H pencils. The artist also talks about the challenges he faces in his work. Usually I don't get enough equipment, especially for colors. There are certain special colors that I use. Like if uh, somebody told you I'm using pencil colors and uh, B pencils, but I need also pastels, paintings, and also the other the texture, the, the, the texture of uh, the quality of the paper that I'm using is not the actual. Like many times I'm not avoiding to buy the canvas paper, which is actually designed for art. Some passerbys are often mesmerized by his work, while others just look and walk away. You can see here, yeah, it's nice, yeah? it's nice, yeah? and it's direct. I can see it's very direct. From the picture to there. Ah, yeah, very perfect. Hezekiah said he can draw all kinds of images and pictures, and he declares that the sky is the limit for him. He says he will continue to draw and hope that one day he will have an exhibition of his work. Now, in a new feature on the show called Zim Talk, Liam Thorpe talks to a prominent Zimbabwean about their life and work. Welcome to Zim Talk, the part of the show where we want to hear from you, we want to hear interesting stories, we always try and get people in the studio to talk to us about what they're doing, what's going on in their life and in their business at the time. One such person is Simba Nyanhanga, the founder of Zim Online Media, who's kindly joined us in the studio today. Thanks very much for joining us Simba, and firstly if you could just tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, thank you, it's good to have me here um, on, eight, on ATV News. Um, my name is Simba Nyanhanga. Uh, my middle name is Patrick, of course. I am the founder and the chief executive officer for Zim Online Media, which you have already seen, uh, which co uh, comprises of Zim Online Radio, uh, Zimbabwean community radio station, which broadcasts uh, over the internet uh, globally, and uh, Zim Online News, which is a news portal. Again, it's a Zimbabwean community news portal, which uh, uh, um, keeps Zimbabweans update on uh, local things, community issues, community news, and also things that are happening all over the world. Um, basically, that's, 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 that's what we do. And how long have the two things been running, the radio station and the online website? I will be honest with you, um, the, the, the dream came to motion in uh, 2009. Uh, that's when Zim Online Radio was incepted. And... Um, uh, so it's just above uh, three years, but the, the, uh, the news portal uh, is barely six months. So the radio has been running for just, up, just above three years. And uh, in the three years, we have won one uh, Zimbabwean Community Award. And also we've been nominated uh, for three other awards, including the BEFTA Awards, which we are also nominated this year as well. 
So you're based in the UK, but you do have offices in Zimbabwe and I believe in other parts of the world. How does that work? Absolutely. Uh, technology is evolving now. You know, everything is, uh, is now via the internet. Um, I'm based in the, here in the United Kingdom. We do have uh, other staff members based in America, uh, others in Canada, others in South Africa, others in Zimbabwe, uh, others in China and Australia as well. So we've got quite um, a network uh, within the Zim Online Media. Uh, <clears throat> we also now our 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 core editor now is based in uh, in Namibia for the for the for the news portal. Uh, she is quite brilliant. She has worked with uh, a lot of uh, Zimbabwean newspapers in the past. Now, what advantages do you think you have to being based in the UK? Are there certain freedoms? Are there certain things you can do here that you couldn't do in Zimbabwe? Uh, absolutely. Um, there are numerous advantages. Uh, the primary advantage that is there is, uh, um, as you know, that this is all online. Uh, the radio is live. It broadcasts 24-7, non-stop. So obviously in Zimbabwe, the internet, uh, uh, the internet signal is not yet uh, consistent that you could uh, uh, effectively uh, run a radio station from, from Zimbabwe, even from South Africa or Botswana. Uh, they're still probably they're still uh, trailing behind as far as uh, the internet um, uh, quality is concerned, the broadband quality is concerned. Uh, another thing that is also advantage is um, information travels fast in the first world, so you actually are always up to date with the information, and uh, it's easier also to interact uh, on the basis. But vis-a-vis, -vis, I mean. Uh, Facebook has become very predominant in, in sub-Saharan Africa as well as it is at the same speed as it is anywhere else in the world. So I wouldn't want really to say our our following uh, back in Zimbabwe and in South Africa or any other country are, are so, so much behind. So I think the most uh, advantage that I see is uh, um, is uh, the, the, the speed of the internet. And also um, Within our operation, we work quite closely with uh, authorities in Zimbabwe, so I wouldn't say uh, we do have so much of freedom uh, issues. Uh, we have been given uh, quite some support uh, right from the very government. Uh, uh, as we all know, the government is now multi-party. We work with people from the ZANU-PF, we work with people from the MDC, we work with people from Mavambo. Uh, just a couple of months ago, we even had Simba Makoni on, on the radio. Uh, we interviewed him, who is also a presidential candidate. And also recently we even had uh, uh, confirmation that we'll be having the vice president, Mayim Juru, on the radio as well. So I would say when it comes to freedom, uh, while things are not that easy, but I think we are getting as much support as we require. Now, clearly things are going well with the businesses, but where do you see yourselves in five years' time? Where, where do you want to be in five years' time? We would want to cover the, all the um, media broadcasting. I myself am from a um, <clears throat> mass media communication background. So it's probably something that I'm so passionate about and something that I love doing. And also I'm um, an unapologetic Zimbabwean. And based on that as well, I, some that I would also want to see the Zimbabwean community as well take its stand in, within the media industry and also, you know, and f information dissemination within the Zimbabwean communication and uh, sort of community was, has not always been at its very best. So I would also want Zim Online Media to have its slice of the cake and uh, make sure that at least whatever we do, we do it as effectively as possible. But again, coming back to your question, where do we see ourselves five years from now? Um, our dream and our vision is um, inspired by the likes of Donald Trump, the likes of uh, the Murdochs, and um, uh, say Richard Branson. So I would say uh, in five years' time, we may not be there, we probably may not even be close there, but we will probably be uh, somewhere. <laughs> I mean, we're advancing. Like I said, I mean, looking at it, in, within our first year, we'd actually won an award, and nearly every year we're being um, nominated for an award or two, which at the end of the day uh, still gives us a reality check that we are still. Uh, we are doing whatever we are supposed to do. We're not best, we're not perfect, uh, but whatever concerns that always are raised, we do our best to make sure that we address them. Now, I've checked out a bit of the website and I can see you do have the hard news and the politics, but you have a really broad range of things, community news. Is that important for you, to have that range? Indeed, it's actually part of our editorial policy. I will be very frank with you. Um, I've been in this country 13 years now, and every time in the walks of life, the minute you say you're from Zimbabwe, you are either politicized. The minute you talk something that you make reference to Zimbabwe, it's quickly taken into politics, whether it's about a Zimbabwean product, 
whether it's about the Zimbabwean community, whether it's about it's, it's, that's the stereotype and the stigma that we want to kill. Want to make, we want to, the world to see that Zimbabwe is beyond politics. Also, and also, there, there's quite a lot of fascination within the Zimbabwean community. There's good spots, like we do have our, our own 18-year-old Axel Jeffries, who is in the uh, Formula 2 motorsport. We do have uh, uh, MoneyGram has quite invested some very good uh, interest in Zimbabwe. We do have uh, some um, uh, arts and media um, uh, 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 talent that's actually uh, all over the world, Zimbabwean talent. And uh, in the last summer, we even had um, uh, Winky D and another Lady B who performed at, uh, at Wembley Stadium. And uh, just this weekend, we had uh, the likes of Knox and Jab Fraser who were here in Manchester, in London, and Coventry. So we, we touch nearly every area and make sure that everybody is. Uh, well informed. And finally, if people want to get involved with the radio station or the website, how can they do that? Um, Zim Online Radio, all, there, there are three ways to get in touch with Zim Online. Like, it, it's Zim Online Radio now, let me branch them so that at least I will be as comprehensive as possible. Um, Zim Online Radio is a Zimbabwean community radio. We don't just broadcast within the Zimbabwe or to only Zimbabweans, but we also want other people that are non-Zimbabwean to also come and see how we, we do things the Zimbabwean way. Um, people can tune in by just going to our website, which is zimonlineradio.com, or people that use their um, mobile phones or their other gadgets, iPads and all that, they can just go to uh, tunein.com or many other interfaces now to tune into any internet radio and just search, search for Zim Online Radio and they'll find them. We do have uh, documentaries, we do have um, uh, interviews, we do have quite a lot, we do have live talk shows. So people, when they tune in, they, when, when they go on, their web, on our website as well, we constantly update people on what we're doing. They can also go to our social networks as well, on Facebook, our group is Zim Online Radio, on Twitter is Zim Online Radio, on Skype is Zim Online Radio, where they can interact with us and uh, also we'll make sure that we keep them interested. Now from Zim Online Radio, we go to Zim Online News. Zim Online News, because it's Zimbabwe uh, a news portal, we we always challenge people if you've got an interesting subject for you to, uh, to share with us or if you even if you want to be part of Zim Online News, uh, just uh, drop us an email, drop us a call and uh, we'll, we'll be happy, we'll actually want to work with you because our primary goal is to, um, to lift up the Zimbabwean community and to, uh, to, to move it from the stereotype, from the stigma of that negative publicity, negative politics, just giving everything associated with this politics and all that. We want now to be vibrant, positive, enthusiastic, and have a legacy for our children and the generations to come. Simba Nyanhanga, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for that, Liam. Please remember to get in touch with any news or stories that you have by going on the ATV Facebook page. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and have a pleasant evening.